Hello and welcome to Avian Jay's Adventures number something. I don't know. I'm in Western Florida now, uh, which is a totally different ecosystem. And I'm here at this preserve, this wonderful, nice wildlife preserve, because I've heard that there's lots of dangerous venomous snakes. So I've come out here today with my anti-snake pants, with the intention of finding one of these snakes, confronting them, uh, and challenging them in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now, I don't expect to lose because they don't have hands, uh, but who knows what they've got up their sleeve. Nothing, because they're snakes. They don't have hands, they don't have sleeves. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm very hopeful for my victory today against the venomous snakes. We'll see. Well, hello there. You think just staying completely still will stop me from seeing you? You're a very cute bunny rabbit. Well, have a nice day. The little anoles, the little lizards are absolutely everywhere. And it's great because if you get up close to them, they kind of stop in place. And if you stop in place and stand completely still, they go, wait, you're scared of me? I thought I was supposed to be scared of you. And you can gaslight these little lizards into thinking that you're scared of them. It's a really fun hobby. My grandparents, who I'm staying with here, were very worried about the venomous snakes in the preserve, and so I feel like it'd be fun to mess with them. Text them, oh my god, I've been bitten by love for this preserve. <laughs> you won't believe it. An alligator came right up to me, opened his mouth, and told me about the ingenious design of the aluminum beverage can. Did you know? So... What's up, my dude? How you doing? How's your day? How you been feeling? How's life? Huh? Ah, yeah, that's my guy. Oh, yes, hi, Mr. Bright Yellow and Red Grasshopper. That's very cool. Oh, hey, hello, Mr. Bright Yellow and Red Grasshopper. Hey, hi, hi, everyone. Hey, guys. Hello, how are you doing? Oh, hey, guys. Oh, hi. Hey, oh, hey, how you doing? You're doing good? Oh, look at you. How about you? How you doing? How you doing? Oh, God. Oh, no. No. Please. Talk to me. There was a guy fishing at the entrance to the preserve. And I went over and I said, well, you know, what are you catching? And he was just talking to me about the fish. And I said, oh, yeah, I'm actually an ichthyologist, you know, from New Jersey. You know, I study fish. And he goes, oh, my God. And he tells me this whole story about how his first boss he worked for. And he's like, and yeah, so my first boss was an oncologist. Don't think you heard what I said, but I like your energy. So here in this pond, there are tons of little fish swimming about, including some highly colorful ones that may be young cichlids or tilapia. And there's one over there with a lot of colors, got blue on the tail. So I'm just gonna sit here until they forget that I'm here, and then I'll take a nab and see if I can catch something. Managed to nab my first fish not exactly sure what he is some sort of you know tilapia or cichlid or something like that that's swimming about in this pond let's get him in the specimen container he is very beautiful not exactly sure what he is but clearly some type of cichlid i don't think he's the mayan cichlid which i have seen and caught before so he should be something new to me very pretty there's lots of other different colored guys in there so i should be able to come across even more guys just like this uh, and even more unique things so i'm just going to keep sitting here gaining their trust and then taking a swing now announcing the greatest new technology in fishing it may just look like a broken hand net but in fact when placed down with rocks inside of it and then fish scared into it it is one of the most effective traps in existence so yeah, I'm waiting for all the fish to get used to their normal life in the rocks, and then I'll come up on the shore like I normally do, scare them, and hopefully some of them will scurry over to, or even hide in those rocks before I do that. And then I'm just able to pick up the net real quick, because it can pick up the rocks without issue, and I'll have fish in my net. I did this to catch some fish at the ocean. I've never tried this in fresh water, but we'll see if it works. Using my patented net trap, I did manage to catch some one. So he looks suspiciously similar to the first fish I caught, but we'll check him out anyways. He certainly looks exactly like the first fish that we caught, but I am not to rule out the possibility that it is a different species because I truly don't know. 
I don't know these cichlids or these tilapia at all. These are all brand new fish to me. Uh, there's some very bright red ones that I've yet to catch, so I'm hoping to grab one of those next. Now see, stuff like this, putting the net down in the water and chasing the fish into it or letting them get used to the rocks in the net, stuff like that is certainly more challenging than just throwing in a hook and line, you know, micro fishing or whatever for all these fish. But that's something that I value a lot about the way that I fish. I've never hook and line fish and I don't really have any plans of doing so. I like my little hand net, my little broken net. I think it works just as well as any fishing line. Of course, I have to get a bit more dirty. I put in a bit more effort and it's certainly more difficult and mentally challenging, uh, but I think that's more fun. I have never really had much fun just kind of sitting at the shore waiting for fish to come in. I like to chase them down, you know, figure out how I can outsmart them. It's like a game. It's like a puzzle uh, more than where regular fishing kind of just feels like a, one of those auto clickers. So, although people often suggest that I should go hook and line fishing and I should start incorporating that in these videos, just thought I'd let you know, I don't have any plan of doing so. I like just me, my net, and the wildlife. Also, it's probably better for the fish. Who knows what the actual end conclusion of research will be on whether hooking a fish in the mouth can actually cause detrimental effects to its life. I don't know. No one really knows at the moment. Uh, so for as long as I have the choice, I think I would rather be doing something that is pretty easily explicable as non-invasive to the fish. Oh, oh my goodness. These redfish have been one of the most intelligent fish species I've ever tried to catch. I mean, all of the various things that I tried and I didn't manage to nab one. I've been here for about an hour until finally just now I got one of the redfish. He is very beautiful but I'm guessing based on the large black spot on his side that he's the same species as the stuff I caught earlier. So I will get him in the specimen container and take a closer look, but I have a feeling this isn't a new species to me, but that's all right, because he's pretty. Well, he is definitely very pretty. That red and blue spot pattern on the tail is very pretty. You can see the blue on his operculum, though it's not as present as on the younger fish where it was all over the body. And those big black spots that but probably is an eye spot of some sort. He's a very beautiful fish. Unfortunately, I don't think he's a new species, but that's all right. I spent 45 minutes to catch this man and I do not regret a second of it. Now this guy is actually, believe it or not, a male mosquito fish. Despite looking like, you know, some sort of Dalmatian molly, it's actually a mosquito fish. This is a male mosquito fish, which has melanistic properties. So he develops these black spots in them, whereas the rest of mosquito fish are a pretty distinct silver appearance. This guy's got some black spots. And even as they get bigger and the melanism develops more, they can end up being black and white spotted, completely like a Dalmatian fish, uh, which is really cool. But you occasionally see these guys swimming around, you, you know, at first think there's something different, a different species, but they're actually just mosquito fish. Henwo! Hello! How are you doing? Okay, bye. Yep. I am in the middle of nowhere. Just swamp or slough, which apparently those words mean the same thing according to Google. It's not like creek and stream where they mean something slightly different in technicality. This is ridiculous, by the way. It's so wild, but there's fish. Damn, look at this mushroom. That's a crazy looking one. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. We've got a deep water pond in which there are multiple large fish swimming about. So it is time for the camera drop in. <laughs> camera lowered into the water, making sure it's facing the right direction and semi tied onto the stake here. And now we wait. Maneuvering the camera with just the string is an art. See, I only tie it to one point on the camera. So using just the tension and the placement of the string and then going along with the flow of the water, I have to get it facing the exact direction that I want, facing either up or down. Everything that I need to get a good shot, I have to manipulate from up here through a little string. Hello, Zach from the future here to tell you about these amazing fish that I found. Uh, it's mostly just tilapia, actually. In fact, it was solely tilapia and one Oscar. That's it. That was, that was all that was in the entire pond. So as you may have seen when I was setting up the camera, I always 
tie it to the edge, you know, to the boardwalk or whatever I'm hanging it off of to secure it. So even though most of the time I'm holding it, occasionally I'll go look around. I want to make sure it's still secured. So today I tied it off like always, as you saw in the video, and I'm over looking at something else on the other side and a little kid climbs up onto the boardwalk, onto the side rail, unties it, and then throws the string in the water for no reason while their parent was watching. Just does that. So I had to go on a rescue mission for my camera. Uh, I had to climb over the railing and then down a pole on these little nubs coming out of it so that I could grab the camera string out of the water before it sunk. So if you saw anything good on that camera footage, thank the fact that I was able to get it, I guess. It is only early morning, but today we are going to the beach. Now the Gulf Beach rather than the Atlantic Beach because I'm on the west side of Florida. And I'm going to do some free diving by some rocks there with my goggles and take some videos, see some cool saltwater fish. Something I rarely get to do and see because the water's not really clear or warm enough where I am. Free diving montage. What was that? Free diving montage. What did you say? Free diving montage. Did you say free diving montage? Yes. Hmm. I guess if you insist. Hello, and welcome to Avian J After Hours. Um, fun lore you might not know about Avian J. I'm a bit scared of the dark. I mean, not in like the terrified, horrible way, obviously, because I'm out in a preserve right now in the middle of the night. More in like the, I don't want to do this and I find it very spooky and uneasy. The noises are straight out of a horror game. My flashlight does not go nearly as far as I would like it to. Uh, and there's weird stuff everywhere. But in an effort to confront my fears and maybe more realistically add some time to the video because I've got one day left in Florida and I need more footage. Okay, something landed on me. I figured we'd take a stroll through a nature preserve filled with alligators and venomous snakes in the middle of the night with a flashlight that barely illuminates anything. If you're watching this, I lived, so it's probably fine, right? Let's find out. Look at this crazy stick bug. Is it two stick bugs? What an insane creature. Okay, there's another one of these things where it's one like stick bug on top of the other. I really do not know what these guys are, but right next to them, Considerably cuter. Extremely tiny frog. Extremely tiny frog. Holy shit, that is a small frog. Bro, I'm in a fucking horror game. Look at this. Look at my view. <laughs> and do you hear that? It's like a tree frog, probably, but it's fucking horrifying. This is horrifying. <sighs> The things I do for the sake of content. Hey, if you guys could subscribe, that'd be lovely. I kind of want to hit 400k by the end of the year so that I don't feel like a psychopath for doing this. Jesus. These dudes straight up sound like the Squid Game theme. Something big just moved over there. Okay. Oh, that's a nice sound. This is horrifying. What is that? Just a stick. Just a stick. Anything behind me? Nothing behind me. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. I think. Are you guys done sounding like that? Dude, I'm in a horror game. What is ma- it has to be frogs, right, that are making that noise? 
I'm scared to stand by the water. I feel like an alligator could be around. Dun, 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 dun. They've kind of got a rhythm though. It's kind of a funky beat. Uh, yeah. There's no way this is not the song that plays when the killer is coming for you in Dead by Daylight. Dun, 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 I swear to God, it is note for note. These frogs and birds are singing the Dead by Daylight killer theme. What the fuck was that? All right, I think we're going to turn around for the night. I've had enough growing up and bonding experience, don't you guys think? Saw a cool bug or two. Time to get the fuck home. All right. This is as light as I can get the face camera, so I guess this is how it's going to be. I guess I could hold the light to my face, but then it's like I'm telling a spooky ghost tale. I am on my way home. Um, for the past 15 minutes, I've been extremely paranoid. Every time I would walk, I would hear this whooshing sound, like a whoo, whoo, whoo. All right, and if I stopped walking, if I stood still, I stopped hearing it. And so, as any normal person would think in that situation, I'm thinking, I'm getting followed by something. And I don't know what it could be. Maybe like a bobcat? There's bobcats around here? I don't know. Anyways, I just discovered after getting back on the road that it was actually my backpack. My backpack, as I walk, makes a whooshing sound. But you can imagine, I think it was fair that I got paranoid. Uh, so here we are. Back to civilization. I don't know if that night walk was worth it. I feel like I just played a horror game. I feel uneasy and like I don't want to do it again. But maybe it made me a little braver. And maybe it was enjoyable for you guys. Oh, and I saw that cool bug that was on top of that other bug. There were like 30 of those. Little stick bugs, one on top of the other. Every single one had a pair. Must be like mating night or something. It was an interesting walk. Maybe it was worth it. I don't know. Buy it, use it, break it, fix it, trash it, change it, melt it. my final day here in western Florida. I head home tomorrow. Took one last little walk through the preserve. It's been amazing. Seen a lot of really interesting things in there. Seen a lot of really interesting things in the area and in Florida in general. Seeing cichlids and tilapia and stuff like that just out in the wild in ponds is very weird. Those are the kind of things that I, I expect in aquariums or in farms, not to just you know, see like there's one right in front of me. There's a Mayan cichlid, a pretty big one just sitting right there. So that's very weird to me. But uh, it's been a cool ecosystem. I think I'm ready for New Jersey. I think uh, Florida is too hot for me, <laughs> but I've seen a lot of cool things and I am excited for wherever the next Avian Jays adventures take.